Yes, sir. Do you mind if I vacuum out here? The no, noise. No, you can carry on, Miss Curtis. You sure? I can leave it till later. No, no, quite sure. I'll be the first to tell you if you do. All right. I'll close the door, then. Good. Fine. Fine. Carter? What's the matter? Oh, I, I seem to have damaged my arm. What did you do? I knocked the statue over. Look, uh, uh, just sit down, will you? Oh. That's right. You keep, keep quite still. I try straightening my no, 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 no. You keep quite still and keep supporting it, will you? Oh. With the, uh, the other arm. That's right. Oh. That's it. That's right. What do you think I've done? Well, uh, I rather think that you fractured it, Mrs. Carter. Fractured it? How on earth did you do that? Well, I just caught the statue with the vacuum and it fell over. What? This? Yes. What do you mean, the, uh... You mean it, uh... It toppled and caused you to stumble and you fell on your arm? No, no, I didn't fall. It simply hit my arm. But this is no way to talk, Professor. Now, look, Susan, would you get her to the hospital straight away? Yes, of course. And telephone her doctor? Thank you. That's right. I'm sorry to... Yeah, to be so Just have a quick... Well, it looks as if they're going to have to rewrite a good deal of ancient Peruvian history. Provided we can establish the date. We already have. Not conclusively. Lay odds. They're not bookmakers, Price. There's a Dr. Johnson to see you. Johnson? Yeah, he's the local GP. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Oh, how do you do? Uh, we haven't met, but my secretary tells me you want to speak to me. Yes, about Mrs. Carter. She's my patient. How is she? The fracture's quite clean. Good. Uh, what can I do for you? Would you tell me what you think of this? Come into my laboratory. Yes, certainly. Extraordinary. I take it this uh, is of Mrs. Carter. Yes, it is. We presume it is freakish calcium deficiency caused the accident. Hmm. Would you take a look at this one as well? Huh. It's another one of my patients. Bone so brittle it was fractured by a slight knock. Now, what age group would you think? Well, I wouldn't expect to find bone redifaction to that extent, except in anyone of advanced age, but uh, that's not the case. Under 40. <laughs> Extraordinary. But, um, why? Here? Why have I brought the x-rays to you? Yes. I was wondering if there could be a connection between these and research work at your college. Well, what connection? Well, you're probably aware that the college researched a new drug. Oh, yes, indeed. FX302. For the amount of publicity it got, there can't be anybody in Oxford who isn't aware of it. It shows all the signs of a breakthrough in the treatment of depression. Wasn't a drug company involved? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, Kirk's team did the research work, sponsored by the college. They had a commercial firm, backed it financially. But I, I still don't see the connection. After the license to manufacture was issued, a limited number of GPs in one or two hospitals were asked to run field trials. Mm. Well, I'm in a group practice. We were asked to participate. It's not yet on the market. No, only a limited manufacturer at the moment, under the name Melodolin. Yes. What are you saying? Both of these, Mrs. Carter and the other patient, were suffering from acute depression. And you had both on the drug? Yes. Are you suggesting there could be some sort of side effect? Yes. Well, considering all the controls and the very... <laughs> cautionary approach to such things before a certificate is issued it seems to be most unlikely. It's just that two youngish patients, both on a new drug, should suffer that degree of rarefaction. Yes, but it could have been a coincidence. Were any other patients on the drug? Well, yes. But any side effects with them? Well, I've had no occasion to x-ray them. Well, really, a fine occasion. You need something more than this to go upon. Yes. Yes, probably nothing to it. Well, thank you very much for showing me. It's most interesting. Hmm. 
I only mention it because they were both on melodolin. What do you imagine we are, Hardy? We've got a bunch of dilettante anthropologists guessing the date of some ancient dynasty. Uh, not exactly. Thank you. I'm not suggesting. But what exactly are you trying to suggest? I'm simply presenting the information for what it's worth. Well, why did this crack come tittle-tattling to you about it? If he's got anything to report, let him do so in the proper way. There's no plot, Kirk. You surely are aware of the procedures, Hardy. The research was going on for years. We made all the necessary checks, ran all the tests before applying for the product license. Thank you, Kirk. I'm sure Dr. Johnson will be reassured. Two cases of calcium deficiency, did you say? Yes. I did point out it was somewhat insufficient. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever the cause of the trouble, it can't be FX302. So you may tell your GP in future to leave research to those qualified to do so. Advise him to stick to treating nappy rash. Hmm. You were treading on sanctified ground. Kirk really is very touchy, Master. In the arts, we call it sensitivity. <laughs> Kirk's never been noted for his equanimity. However, I must accept some of the blame for his present petulance. Despite his opposition, the project has been linked financially with a manufacturing company. I rather insisted. Our research budget is very meagre. It's common enough practice. Purists like Kirk are inclined to regard it as tainted money. Science should only be concerned with the truth, not commerce. Need they be incompatible? No. And I'm glad I insisted. A successful project like FX302 gives a tremendous boost to the college's prestige. You should be surprised how much easier it is to get grants. <laughs> However, enough of that. How is Peru progressing? Mm, slowly but surely. Rather new ground for you, isn't it, Hardy? Yes, yes, yes. As a simple arts man, I envy you the prospect of new discoveries. Nearest I ever get to uh, detective work is reading the latest paperback in bed. It's not so much a question of the age of the skull. Thanks. But did it come from that tomb? And if it did? Well, archaeologically, it'll be about a thousand years out. Hmm. Fascinating. This makes my routine seem prosaic. I don't know that Mrs. Carter would agree. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was all dismissed earlier today as uh, dilettante guesswork. Who had the effrontery to say that? Oh, by the way, I mentioned your query to Professor Kirk. Oh? What did he say? Well, as to blame, it's not FX302. No possibility? Not according to Professor Kirk. Fair enough. Now, if you'll excuse me, I haven't finished my call. <coughs> Joys of general practice. Eh? Here are your x-rays. I'm very grateful. Not at all. up metabolism test procedures. <laughs> what are these? The Peruvian soil tabulations. He said you had more tests to do. I don't think they're necessary. We're 99.9% .9 certain. Well, you know as well as I do that nothing less than 100% will satisfy him.
Professor Hardy, secretary. Hello, it's Dr. Johnson here. Oh, hello, Dr. Johnson. What can we do for you? I'd like to come out and see Professor Hardy. Would that be possible? Well, I'm afraid he's abroad. Abroad? Yes, he's gone to Munich for a conference. He'll be away two or three days, I'm afraid. Is there anything I can do? Uh, uh, no, no, thank you. Ah. What's it about? Oh, it's just I've got the results on something he suggested a couple of weeks ago. I wanted to discuss them with him. Well, I'm afraid he'll be very busy when he gets back. I'll ring you uh, as soon as he's got a free moment. Will that do? Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, good night. Night. All right? Oh, yes, very good. Excellent, Russ. Dr. Johnson's here, please. I'm sorry to trouble you again. I know how busy you are. Not at all. Sorry I couldn't see you sooner. I took your advice. I found occasion to get some x-rays done on my other patients on the drug. Yes? Well, any signs of an infection? No. Good. But I told you the drug had been issued to a limited number of doctors for field trials. I contacted several, asking them to check. And? Apparently the rarefaction is not unique. Tell me, had the possible connection between the drug and rarefaction occurred to any of these GPs before you raised it? No. In fact, they were pretty reluctant to check. The drug is very effective. And how many cases have you found? Three. That makes fun. Could you approach Professor Kirk again? Oh, no. Mind if I make a suggestion? Well, only if it's going to be helpful, Price. Well, why doesn't Dr. Johnson contact the drug company? Well, they're only an hour's drive away. Yes. We've had many reports of the splendid results achieved. I hope you don't think this is just scaremongering. Oh, no, not at all, Dr. Johnson. We're very grateful to you. We'll give it our immediate attention. Thanks. FX302. How did you get it? It wasn't difficult. Price, what have you been up to? Well, I've had collating tests run on it to see if it binds calcium. Collating? Now, that is a thought. Who ran the test? A friend, University Department of Pharmacology. This is a very delicate, confidential matter. This chap's all right. Well, did it collate? Negative. Clear. Johnson's barking up the wrong tree. This stuff doesn't affect calcium at all. Bryce, do you really imagine that Kirk's team haven't carried out such tests countless times? Maybe. And Kirk's right. Whatever's causing the trouble is not this. You're quite right. Question everything. That's the way, eh? <laughs> Four marks. Uh, there's a Dr. Lester on the phone. Lester? Dr. Owen Lester. He says he knows you from college. Yeah, yes, of course he was in Kirk's team. What does he want? Well, he says not to drag you to the phone, but uh, would you like to have dinner with him? When? Tonight. In Maidenhead. I've uh, looked in the diary. You are free. Yes, except for me, would you please? Right. Do you, do you know what happened to Lester after he left the college? I haven't a clue. Professor Hardy, it's good of you to come. Not at all. I was afraid you'd be unable to make it. It was rather short notice. <clears throat> Aperitif. Thank you. I'd like a sherry. You a Manson Miller? Yes, sir, certainly. Thank That's you. Splendid. And another one of those for me. Thank you, sir. What have you been doing since you left college? Oh, I 
I'm afraid I've deserted the fold, as the purists might put it. Gone commercial? Yes, I'm with a manufacturer. Ah, so I rather thought so. I'm the head of their research establishment. Congratulations. Maddox Chemicals? Yes. Uh, have you eaten here before? No. no. Oh, then perhaps you'd allow me to be your mentor. Oh, certainly. <clears throat> now then, I suggest that we start with the lobster thermidor and then have Chateaubriand, yeah? Look, I think I'll forego the lobster. Something else? No, thank you. You know, there's one thing about these commercial firms, Harley. They're realists. They recognize that even scientists have to eat. Oh, that's very generous of them. Uh, this new uh, antidepressant drug is one of their products, isn't it? Melodlin, yes, yes. Mm. They back the recent. Now, of course, they're onto a real money spinner. I mean, it's on the market, of course. Oh, yes, quite. Mm. Be able to help, Dr. Johnson. Johnson? Hmm. He told me yesterday he was going to Maffix. Isn't that why we're here? <laughs> Tell me, Professor, where do you fit in? Fit in? Yes, we're used to GPs running to us. We're popular scapegoats. But he took his problem to you first. Yes. Well, you see, a um, patient of his, suffering bone red attraction, happens to work for me. I see, and you made the speculative connection. No, I don't speculate, Dr. Lester, but I thought I might inquire. And did you? Yes, I asked Professor Kirk. And what did he say? He wasn't prepared to consider the possibility. <laughs> that sounds like Kirk. <laughs> Tell me, do you remember a conversation we once had? Oh, when was this? It was when you were working for Kirk, uh, on Melodlin. Uh, conversation about what? Well, you asked him about various aspects of your work, various possibilities, including uh, one of calcium binding in certain circumstances. Oh, uh, yes, of course. And if I remember correctly, you said that it was statistically remote. Peter? I also remember saying that it was not my line of country. Look, I usually leave the choice of wines to this chap, but would you care to choose one? Very right, definitely. And with your lobster, I would suggest uh, 53. Very good, sir. And so uh, you shunted Johnson over to us? No, not exactly. My assistant, Mr. Price, took the initiative. Your assistant? Yes. And uh, he also had some tests run on the drug. Oh, well, he is an enterprising chap. Yes, he is. And this was on FX302? FX302. The test that he had run? Yes, yes. So? Ah, yes, an impeccable choice. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, what were the results? Negative. Well, this is uh, better than dining in hall, eh, Professor? Do you visit the college often? No, I don't think I'd be very welcome. Oh, why is that? Well, Kirk practically branded me a traitor for taking this job instead of a renewed fellowship. So I avoid the place. I really can't see the point of being accused of selling out for a mess of pottage. You wanted to see me, Master? Yes. Professor Kirk has a problem. I don't know why we're pussyfooting. I have lodged a formal complaint. There's nothing devious. I just don't want Hardy going behind my back making inquiries about my work. It would help if you use less intemperate terms. Just how long have you considered yourself to be a, a one-man committee for the safety of medicine? If you're referring to Melodolin... What else? I did talk to you. Which should have been the end to your interference, but I hear you're still persisting. From whom? Ah, is that relevant? It could be, Master. It's no secret. Dr. Lester, who informs me you've been conducting bench tests. Well, that's not quite accurate. My assistant, Mr. Oh, Price... Oh, that's pretty bad show, isn't it? Passing the buck. I accept full responsibility, Kirk. Now, if either I or Mr. Price, by carrying out this perfectly harmless test, have offended you, I apologise. It was not our intent. Did the tests conflict? Not one iota. Then I see little point in continuing these castigations. Professor Hardy's proffered his apology, and since there seems to be no conflict, I suggest you accept. Perhaps you'll care for a glass of Madeira. I'm afraid I have a lecture, Master, if you'll be so good as to excuse me. If I must.
one man killed. Mrs. Taylor, the woman in the car responsible, jammed on her brake and her ankle went. You know what I'm going to say next, don't you? She's the patient of a colleague. He'd been treating her for depression. Malodolin. Could you arrange for me to see her at the hospital? Uh, Mrs. Taylor, you say? And, and she was on Malodolin? Yes. I've, I've seen her. It appears that calcium deficiency caused her ankle to fracture when she braked. Can you definitely attribute this to Malodolin? No, no. Well, then I see no point in your approaching Professor Kirk further. Yes, of course, there may be no connection at all. But Dr. Johnson will be duty-bound to inform the coroner. Yes, I see. So you will admit, Master, that I can't let the matter lie? No, of course you can't. The college has been receiving royalties ever since the drug was licensed. We could be liable for damages. You must continue. Dr. Johnson tells me you were on Melodolin. Yes. Could you tell me why you consulted him? Well, I was suffering from bouts of depression. Something new for me. I couldn't quite account for it. No, that's not quite true. I was a comp operator before I got married. I think I told you. And in spite of having a home and three small children to look after, I felt shut in. Was the treatment effective? Oh, marvellous. Except it made me wake up and take a good look at myself. <laughs> You're putting on weight. Yes. So you decided to go on a diet. It wasn't just conceit. I weighed over ten stone. Well, well, most of us eat too much. Tell me, what uh, form did your diet take? Oh, I cut out bread, cakes, sugar. Milk, butter, cheese? Yes. Look, would you tell me what your average daily diet is? I, uh, when you get home, just, just write it down. But try and be as accurate as you can. I can give you actual amounts. Yeah. I have to weigh or measure everything I eat. Oh, well, that's splendid. <laughs> Thank you. No, 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 don't you. Now, you take care of that arm, for goodness sake. Thank you. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Susan? Yes? Uh, Susan, um, I wanted to inquire about the other woman who had a fracture. Uh, would you contact Dr. Johnson? Inquire about what? I want you to find out if she was on the diet. Ah. Oh, look, you might tell Johnson I want to cover all those who were on the drug. I did mention I'm in a group practice, four of us. I realize you'd have quite so many on Melodolin. Depression's the modern plague. Yeah. Ah, thank you, Susan. <clears throat> thank you. Thanks, Susan. Well, at least we've established that only these two are on diet. It's not something I advise in the cases of depression. Yeah, well, women who value their appearance don't always follow their doctor's advice. <clears throat> Could that be the cause, then? Um, not enough calcium in the diet? Well, normally, one would hardly expect it to have such a devastating effect. Wouldn't you agree, Dr. Johnson? I would agree. Well, how do these help? Well, I don't really know, except that they point to a, a possible common factor, that of diet. All I can say is that this is the classical way side effects slip through. What have we got? A, the condition only occurs in a small minority. B, it's slow in revealing itself. Yeah, but there could be an explanation not connected with malodolin. Neither of these patients suffers bodily malfunction. There's got to be a further reason why the calcium is not getting through to the bones as it normally should. So you're inferring that on top of a minimal calcium diet, there's some collating agent. Yes. Collating? Yes, it's uh, from the Greek. I mean, it means cloying. In this case, cloying at the calcium, preventing it being absorbed into the bones. And you think melodolin is doing this collating? Well, that is what Dr. Johnson is suggesting. The test that Price had made confirmed there was no collating. I know, of course, that what happens on a test tube doesn't necessarily happen in the body. Are you suggesting that we should start vast series of tests on animals in the lab? I'm not a zoologist. Well, I'm not a chemist, just a GP. I'm lucky if I can spend five minutes with a patient. Frequently when I'm making a diagnosis, I'm flying by the seat of my pants, but by the same token, I'm still convinced the culprit is malodolin. All tests negative to date. Should we increase the FX302? Why ask me? Now, for this series of tests, no. I don't know why I say that. Lord knows it's not my line of country. You know, I agree with Johnson. Why? Lester. Lester. Yes. After coming the old pals act, fancy restaurant, all that, what's he going to do? 
Stirs up Kirk. What's that got to do with all this? Nothing. Nothing at all. You've not been much help, have you, Harold? I'm afraid the professor's not here. Uh, he's not? No, he's at Oxford. Uh, perhaps you could come back later this afternoon. No, I've got another appointment this afternoon. Uh, is Price in? Stop fussing, Muriel. After all the antidepressants you've had, you should be a very happy little rat. Think of all your mates in the shed who haven't had melodolin. Did you say that's the look of a very happy rat? Dr. Lester's here. Mm. He wants to see you. Me? Well, he came to see the professor. I could say you were busy. No, no, no. Send him in. Let's see what he wants. All right. Who knows? We may find out more from Dr. Lester than we have from you and your chums. Uh, this way, Dr. Lester. Thank you. Mr. Price, Professor Hardy has mentioned you. I'm uh, sorry to have missed him. Ah, yes, he's at the college. Yes, yes, I know, and I've just come from there. Oh, pity. No, I understand you've uh, been running some tests on FX302. Mm -hmm. huh? Well, that's why I called, really. I wondered if the professor had got any further with them. Further? Well, to be quite honest, I wasn't sure how far he'd gone. I think all this good food and wine is beginning to fog the old memory. Yeah. Well, we can't rely entirely on in vitro results, so we're doing some calcium absorption and excretion tests on batches of rats. And this is with uh, FX302? Yes, some with FX302 against control rats without. And what about the rats you're in? Is there any variation between the two tests? Uh, the notes? Oh, thank you. Yes, these, uh, these agree with our results. Well, thank you, Mr. Price. You obviously know your stuff. Thank you. Listen, uh, should you ever decide to leave the professor, why don't you give me a ring at Maffox? The terms can be very attractive. You mean I might even get to eat in expensive restaurants? <laughs> yes, quite. Well, do you think that your results have put an end to the professor's interest? I wouldn't like to say. I'm not very keen on open verdicts. Lester here? Yeah. Fishing expedition. Wanted to know the results of the tests. I'd say he was running scared. Scared of what? Well, why come here? Where did you say you got this? From the college, I told you. FX302. That's the lab's tag. The commercial boys dreamed up the name Melodolin. When we had dinner, he asked me specifically if you had your test done on FX302. Yes, me too. You mean, if the commercial boys called him Melodolin, you'd expect him to say Melodolin? Uh, possibly he was just reverting to his days on Kirk's team. Well, I've got some fun for Melodolin somewhere. Yes, here it is. There's an additive. It's only a booster. Added for a sales gimme. A marvellous new wonder drug plus an extra ingredient. And I bet they own the patent on the additive. Possibly. You'd better be a bit more careful in getting your samples. Point taken. So all we've been testing is FX302, whereas the patients have been taking FX302 plus this additive. Oh, well. It's harmless enough, but... I mean, the combination of the two might act as a collating agent? The chances are remote in the extreme. We'll have to get some melodolin. You ready? Just about. Now, let's see. Day five. We've got the control group on normal diet. No abnormality. Down the second group. These are the last two on the calcium deficient diet. Come on, Harold. Come on. There's a boy. Yeah, yes. There's a good lad. Good boy. Good boy. All right. Yeah. 
Hold on. There you go. All right, yeah. I don't have one. That's right, I've got it. All right. There's a good chat. Yes. No, 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 you can't go in with Muriel. But if you come up with what we want, you can spend a whole weekend with her. How's that? Uh, the results of the last four days haven't been exactly encouraging. It's always tomorrow. Morning, Harold. Oh, good boy. Let's see what you've got. Boy, Ruffin. He's not down yet. Oh, it's nearly nine o'clock. Why can't people get up in the morning? Susan. There's a letter here from Peru. Peru. Oh. They regret that I've wasted my time. Skull fragments didn't come from tomb, but from another source. That'll teach me to be a dilettante anthropologist. Morning, Prof. You can't step this way. Here's the control group, normal, of course. This is the odd one out. Well, I'm damned. Calcium's passed right through his system. That's consistent with a collating agent. Well done, Harold. Now, look, Price, let's look at this in perspective, shall we? Out of 20, here we have 19 tests, all negative. And just this one, positive. And that's not proof. Oh, of course not. But it certainly means there's something in Malolin that needs investigating. Uh, I had hoped Professor Kirk would be here. I wanted to talk with you first, John. My information is that once the clinical trials on the drug are complete, then evidence is submitted to the Committee of Safety on Medicines. That is the practice, is it not? And if they're satisfied, they'll recommend the issuing of a product license allowing the drug to be marketed. Yes, but in this case, the clinical trials will have to be stopped because of the possibility of there being side effects. Can you offer any explanation for all this? <sighs> clinical trials cannot possibly anticipate every eventuality. And what else? Well, it is possible that the original tests were not carried out thoroughly. Oh, that of negligence. But as I understand it, there are hundreds of tests that they have to do. It is rather like looking for a needle in a haystack. Oh, I entirely agree, Master. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is a third possibility. If I may say so, Master, I think it's unwise to indulge in speculation. I wish I could agree. But if this is more than just an acceptable oversight, I want the college to be in a position to put its own house in order. Are you suggesting the tests have been falsified in order to obtain a certificate? That has to be considered. Um, Lester had motive job with the drug company and I find this as distasteful as you John <laughs> professor Kirk was in charge he presented the evidence to the committee what you're suggesting is preposterous master uh, you couldn't have known John but there was another team in Canada following the same line they were getting close so Kirk could have had a reason to rush things through Kirk falsify results it's nonsense uh, men of equal reputation have become impatient and cut corners Kirk had invested a good many years of his life in this project. I'm merely suggesting this as a possibility. There are certain possibilities I'm not even prepared to consider. I think you may have to consider, John. Uh. Oh, come in, Professor. Master informs me you pinned down the collating effect to Melodon. No. It's simply that we have shown that there may be a possibility which should be investigated. I'm grateful to you for 
persevering. Seems that I owe you an apology, Hardy. Is this what you've come up with? Yes, yes. yes. Here are results of the tests we had run on uh, FX302. Matching ours? Yes, and uh, here are the equally ridiculously modest tests that we ran on Melodlin. And you will see that this one has collated. I'm in no way casting doubts on your conclusions, Hardy, but I just don't see how this got through. But it doesn't seem to have affected anyone not on a restricted diet. Yes, we should have still picked it out. Yes. Well, perhaps we might consider our course of action. I don't think there's anything to consider, Master. You must inform the drug company and the committee immediately. You want me to do that? No, that's my job. Then all that remains is to find out how it happened. I think that's very much my job too, Master. Don't worry, I'll get on to it straight away. Ah, uh, I'd rather you didn't, Professor Kirk. I think someone less involved. I was about to suggest Professor Hardy. Uh, Master, the I... college would be indebted to you, Professor. I'm sure Professor Kirk understands. Oh, yes, 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 of course I do, completely. Then perhaps you'd arrange to hand over all your records to Professor Hardy. Is there anything I can do, Professor? Oh, well, Tim took me to the theatre tonight. It was the first night. We were passing and saw your light. Tim. Is there anything I can do? Yes, yes. Um, what about me? Mm. Professor? You want to help? Yes, just say the word. Coffee. Coffee. The kitchen's that away. Wouldn't like sandwiches as well, would you? Mm, splendid, splendid. And for Price, too. Good heavens. Is Price still here? Yes, in the lab. Any chance I'll find Mrs. Carter in the kitchen, too? Sugar? Yeah. Cream? Nice to see you dressed for the part, Doc. Susan. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Susan. Oh. Go on. That's enough for tonight. Ooh. Go on. Off you go. Home. Oh. Tell Price to call it a night too, will you? Mm. When I sought your advice, I didn't visualize it would come to this. I've left you with a lousy job, haven't I? Having to point the finger of guilt at someone. I don't let that worry you. I've been doing that for most of my professional life. Professor Hardy, this is Michael Ripley of the committee. Uh, come in, come in. I do do. Professor, great pleasure to meet you. You are acquainted with Mr. Ripley. Good morning. Good morning. I thought in here would be more informal. Professor. Now, how shall we proceed? May I make a suggestion? Please. You've dealt with similar situations. We haven't. My suggestion is we establish as wide an area of agreement as possible. Common ground, so to speak. Hmm? Initial research on the substance codename FX302 was made in the laboratory using... using rats and primates. Professor Kirk, please. Sorry. Then, as is usual, the need arose for clinical trials. The application was made to us for a certificate. 
During this stage, the drug company joined forces with you. Against my better judgment? It was mutually beneficial. By providing finance, they were able to release their own chemists for other projects. Then the additive was introduced. That was the company's bright I know. You were still responsible for researching it. I've said I was. Now, can we get on to Hardy's findings, please? Uh, there is a further point. May I take it nobody disputes that it is the combination of FX302 and the additive which has brought about the bone rarefaction? I've said I don't. Dr. Lester? At present, I have no reason to disagree. Is that supposed to be a straight answer? Look, I'm as concerned about this as you are. I don't think you're concerned about anything, Lester, except yourself. I should have seen through that years ago. <clears throat> Professor Hardy, when we last spoke, we postulated three ways in which this could have arisen. First, that the uh, side effects could not have been foreseen. That some freak chemical reaction took place. Second, simple negligence. And the third, that negligence was followed by somebody deliberately falsifying results. Did you find it was one of these? Or were you able to discover another cause? No, I think it was one of those. Which? Probably the third. Falsification. A shortcut, possibly. The committee was deliberately misled. It would appear so. I don't, I don't understand how you can be so certain. I mean, this isn't even your subject, is it? Well, indeed, it is not, as I once pointed out to you, Dr. Lester. Unfortunately, checking and comparing results of other specialists is. Now, um, you have the results of uh, the tests on FX302 there, on Master, and they can all be substantiated by detailed work papers. And you also have the original tests made on the additive carried out by... Maffix chemicals some five years ago. They're also substantiated by detailed work papers. And finally, test results on uh, a lot of them. You do realize that you're passing judgment on someone's professional life? The task is not of my choosing, and I'm certainly not passing judgment. You know the next question that must be posed. John? Leave Hardy alone. I'm to blame. You, Professor Kirk? That's what I said. Have you nothing to add, Dr. Lesson? I still maintain that you can't substantiate this allegation. The allegations, as you put it, are based upon work papers. For which I am responsible down to the last detail. By the same definition, the committee could also be held to be responsible. <laughs> You're having a field day, Hardy. The committee, now that's really reaching. Both Professor Kirk and the committee may have been misled. Who carried out the tests for collation on melodolin? You won't get me to pass the buck. This inquiry may be informal, Professor Kirk, but we are still entitled to an answer. I did the tests. So let's just get this straight, shall we? What is it that Hardy's accusing me of? I'm saying that, in my opinion, these tests were never made. And I say that you're parading opinion as fact. Dr. Lester, you and I once had a conversation about certain aspects of your work. And in the course of it, you asked my opinion about the probability of certain things happening, including binding of calcium in certain conditions. I said it was not my subject that I considered that it was statistically remote. And I've since checked with a friend of the Radcliffe who confirms indeed that it is a very, very remote chance. Now, you must have known this, and you had reinforced your knowledge with the opinion that I had given you and took what you considered to be an allowable shortcut. And you submitted that opinion in the form of test results. Can you advance a reason why Dr. Lester should risk such a gamble? Well, precisely. Yes, I, I can tell you why. We had to have quick results, didn't we? You knew how near the Canadians were to a breakthrough. You were also after that job with the drug company. You wanted that matter settled before your fellowship came up for renewal. If one failed to materialize, you'd have the other to fall back on. That's why you gambled, right? You repeat those allegations outside of this kangaroo court and I'll fight you every inch of the way. One moment, Lester. I want you to hear this. Hardy won't be submitting that report, but I will. Not only to the inquest, but to your precious drug company and to every necessary medical authority. I will see that you never work in the field of medical research again. That will be my final task here. Yeah? 
When I have completed my report on this affair, I will send you my resignation. <clears throat> Unpleasant business, Hardy, but we are grateful to you. Maudlin will be withdrawn till the cause of collation can be found and rectified. It in no way diminishes the importance of the drug. Master. You're not going to accept Kirk's resignation, surely? I think I must. I can anticipate what you're going to say, Hardy. College can ill afford to lose a scientist of his caliber. Then why do it? Kirk misjudged the man. Perhaps if he hadn't trusted him. We can't always be governed by cold logic. Not even scientists. Thank you.